We said that the word for always was siempre. Siempre. Good. Now, if you know Italian or some other Latin language, maybe you have something like sempre in that language. And you can see again that the E is splitting between sempre and siempre. So if you know one of these other languages or if you've studied them, it can be useful just to notice that. And just noticing that helps you internalize this new word. So, for example, well in Spanish is bien, like in the beginning of welcome, bienvenido. This in Italian is bene. We see that we get rid of the E, last E, and the E in the middle splits. You have in French, bon, for good. What do you think good might be in uh, Spanish? What do you think we'll do to make that more Spanish? Bueno. Bueno. We also said that vamos, vamos, meant we're going or let's go. And it's something that you're going to hear all the time. Vamos, vamos, let's go. Now, another useful skill that we want in language learning is to work backwards, not just to work from the two form, take off the R or the R or the E and add bits on, but we want to get in the habit of also working backwards because maybe we see or hear somewhere a word like vamos and we want to be able to work backwards from vamos to get the other versions, taking off the ending which is for we and putting our other bits on. So could you work out from vamos how it would be he goes or is going, she goes or is going, you fool will go or are going. The thing is, you don't know the ending of the two form. If you have amos, you know which is your vowel, no? Ah. Ah. So, walk backwards. Ah, uh, yes. Okay, yes. <laughs> so, ba? Ba. What does that mean, ba? He, she, it, or you, formal. Good. Go or are Go, going. Yeah. Good. Ba. How would you make that? You, informal. Bas. Bas. Good. If you want to say where are you going, you will hear to where are you going. Uh, what was the word for to? Ah. Ah. So how would you say to where? To where are you going? A donde vas. A donde vas. What would be they go? Or you plural go? Van. 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 Good. So we can work backwards. Vamos, va, vas, van. What was the I version? It was irregular and we remembered it by thinking I'm going on a voyage. Voy. Voy. Good. Now the two form, to go, is ir. I are. All by itself. Ir. This is to go. So it's, it's very irregular, and this is actually because this verb is two verbs that kind of stuck together to form one verb over time. So in French, you have like a aller, no, which means going, and in English we get alleyway from this. An alleyway is like a road, no, and this is related to ir. So ir comes from one verb, historically. And then the versions of ir actually come from a different verb. So they kind of stuck together over time and they give us this very irregular situation. That's just for interest. We don't need to know any of this. All we need to know is voy from voyage and vamos. And we can work backwards from vamos. And there we have the complete set. Voy, vamos, va, vas, van. But to go is ir. They're coming from two different verbs historically, which is why we have ir, which is an ir verb, but a coming up for all of the different versions. So how would you say I want to go? Quiero ir. Good. I can go. I have the power to go. Puedo ir. Good. I must go. Debo ir. Debo ir. I have to go. So not I must go. Debo ir. I have to go. What does I have from tener? Tengo. Tengo. What do we add to that to get the meaning of have to? Ah. Que. Like I said, there's no comfortable translation for it, but we add on que to tengo and we get the feeling of have to rather than the feeling of possession. So I have to go. Tengo que ir. Tengo que ir. I have to go now. Tengo que ir ahora. Good. The word for tonight is this night. Esta noche. Esta noche. So I have to go tonight. I have to go this night. Tengo que ir esta noche. Now, noche is feminine. 
We know this because esta, the word for this, is ending in an A. So how would you say the night? La noche. La noche. So we said that words ending A are feminine, or there are feminine endings, like ion or idad, la opinión, la oportunidad. If it ends in an E, there's actually no way of knowing whether it's masculine or feminine by the word. You have to look at what's around it. Or in the dictionary, it will tell you. But if you hear it in conversation, you have a look at what's around it, esta noche, and then you can go, oh, okay, so noche is feminine. Another example of a feminine word that ends in an E is carne. Carne. What do you think carne means? It's not at all obvious. You have carnage in English. It was just carnage. Carne is meat. Mm. Meat. And it's a feminine word. So the meat... La carne. La carne. I don't eat meat. No como carne. No como carne. The word for end in Spanish is e, and it's just spelled with a y by itself. E. E. I don't eat meat and I don't drink or I don't take alcohol. So tomar was to take, tomar, and comer, to eat. So how would you say I don't eat meat and I don't take Alcohol. I don't drink alcohol. No como carne. And? E. I don't drink alcohol. No, no tomo alcohol. 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 Good, because we don't pronounce H in Spanish, do we? No como carne y no tomo alcohol. Or if you wanted to say, I eat meat and I take alcohol. I eat meat and I drink alcohol. How would that be? Como carne y tomo alcohol. Good. 